Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am fantastic. Because I have a whole bunch of new succulents here, and it's time to do a pretty hefty succulent haul. Wow, okay, I can't even fit these all in frame. This is a little dramatic. There we go, one cactus. But all still succulents. I was just at my local Home Depot and picked up pretty much everything I could find that fit my needs, I should say. I have a bunch of projects getting ready to come up here where I'm going to be needing a lot of succulents and uh, it was kind of slim pickings. I mean, obviously they had a lot, but a lot of it didn't look too good. As I'm sure many of you know, it's kind of first come first serve. Got to get there quick when big box stores get in these succulents that are on these shelves with no light and they don't get watered or taken care of. It's it's kind of a crapshoot, but I still got some pretty good stuff. So go ahead, dive in here, even though you're all seeing it right now. I'll go through them one by one. I mean, except for the things like you see here where I have multiples of them. You don't need to see every single one of those. And you're seeing everything right now. Did I just ruin the whole haul? I hope not. I'm going to do my best to try and have their tags in focus. And if when I'm editing, I see they're not in focus, I'll go ahead and type it out on the screen and I'll timestamp and put the names of everything in the description down below in the bottom of the video, below the video, I should say, as well. That way you can, you know, go down there, pause the video, and check it out in case it didn't come through. How's that sound? Well, for starters, let's go with this great big guy here. The Pachycerus Pringleae. This is also called the False Saguaro or Cardin. I've mostly heard of it referred to as False Saguaro. I don't, I don't know what Cardin is. Maybe that's, I don't know. Those are quotation marks, so I don't think that's a variety name. Anyways, look at how neat this cactus is. It's actually quite large too. It does never looks as big on camera, I swear. This is pretty big. Probably a good foot, especially for what it costs. That's a great deal. These guys get really big over many years, that is, and branch out. Just like that name suggests, they look a lot like a false saguaro. And here we have the string of buttons, which is Cressula perforata. Look at how cool that is. It's a very interesting crassula with a really neat growth habit. They kind of spread out and go all over the place. Really, really neat looking plant. Has nice textures. There's some color variations in there. And as you can kind of see, they sort of have little bitty hairs along their leaves too, which is cool. Adds a nice texture to the plant. All right, and here we have the Eleonopsis leucophii. Look at the foliage on that. Isn't it cool? These guys kind of form a rosette habit, which is a little bit harder to see when it's compacted into its pot like this. The thing that's really cool about this though is the texture. These tiny little bumps that are all over the leaves. Really, really neat, very interesting. I like the spots and everything that are in here with the texture which you can kind of sort of see around here. It's kind of a reddish hue to it. Really just an interesting looking plant. Okay, Cressula Messimipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipipip
edges, I should say, along those leaves. These guys spread like crazy. As you can see, it has a nice rosette shape. There are two of them in this pot, and I will be dividing them and using them in different applications, but it's just kind of a pretty normal average find, I would say, but I like this out a lot, particularly because, like I just said, it spreads very, very well. Echeverias. I don't know what to say other than I'm basically addicted to these guys. I love Echeverias. I love the rosette shapes. And I really, really love the flowers, too, even when they're overexposed. This does have a flower on it. It also has another stalk getting ready to pop up there. But mostly, I actually like this guy for its growth habit and its colors. The grays and the blues that kind of blend in there into those red tips. Really nice, and look at how heavy that rosette is. There are so many leaves in there. Really pretty. Okay, so I got distracted for a moment, and I honestly, I, I have no idea where I left off. Well, I also got these two guys right here. The foliage on them looks a little bit different, but they're actually the same plant. Uh, well, well, maybe they're not. This one says it's an assorted sedum, and this one says it is sedum fine gold leaf. That would explain the difference there. Maybe this is just the gold leaf, gold version of that. Okay, well, I thought I was just getting the same plant, but they were in different lights. I actually don't care because I'm going to be using them in two separate things, but they're neat. Particularly because of their texture, they have teeny tiny little bitty leaves, which is sometimes a little bit harder to find when you're just going through like the assorted succulents at, you know, the big box stores. And I think having the different sizes and shapes, teeny tiny little bitty leaves is really important for texture. Someone keeps texting me, don't they know I'm busy? So yeah, that's these guys. Pretty cool. I think that they'll form a low growing carpet and just like I said, texture, 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 texture. Seems like everything I've been doing is for texture and color. And some of them are just cute. That's all it comes down to. It's a lot of these. I just like the way a lot of them look, especially these guys. These are Grapidocetum California Sunset. And I imagine these will color up some more once they're actually in real lighting and not in a dark shelf at Home Depot, more than likely, but not too terribly much. I don't think these get crazy bright like the Seedum Firestorm, which I also have, which is good. I kind of wanted more of this glaucous coloration with the rosy tips on them. I like these a lot. And I actually grabbed quite a few of these next guys. I'm sure you've seen these before. These are pretty common. This is Seedum Firestorm, Seedum Adelphi. Really common, popular Seedum that with more light, not too much light, not too much direct light that is, but they color up very, very nicely. And I did grab these off different shelves so you can see the variations in the colors and everything. This guy right here, more green, was in a very dark spot, whereas this was in the front of the tray got a little bit more light. And like I said before, the more light I give these guys, the more they will start to color up. What's cool with these guys, and really just about everything I've grabbed here with these different succulents, there's normally three or four of them per pot. They typically aren't that well rooted, even though this one actually looks like it is, but you can usually just pull these right apart and then use them, have three separate plants. Always nice to have the extras. They're not really extras, I'm gonna be using all of them. But you know what I mean. And another sad sedum. This is actually, I think, more my fault because I dropped it, so a few leaves fell out. Whoops. This variety, though, is sedum rubriticant in it. I don't know, Aurora. You can see kind of like this pork and beans like I showed earlier. It has a similar foliage to it, but it's not as shiny and green. It's more glaucous, like I had mentioned with some of the other plants, kind of a greenish blue with nice pinky tips on it. Ultimately, I wanted this guy because it has a similar shape to the pork and beans, but it's going to add a good contrast. To, that way they both stand out a little bit better. Look at this cute little mini jade. This is Crassula ovata compacta. Crassula ovata, very common succulent. This is just a compact variety of that. Nothing crazy here, just a neat looking plant. It's going to outgrow what I'm going to be using it for, but again, there are many, many stems rooted down here into this pot that I'll be able to pull out separate them out and over time this will actually grow into a really cool looking small plant though actually not even that small i still think the compacted variety gets like three feet tall something like that so it'll still get pretty big just might take a little bit longer that's all i've always been a really big fan of this next plant and it's the donkey tail the variety is burrito really cool plants when these succulents when they get some age on them and you get have them in a decent sized shallow bowl they spread over the top and look really really cool almost like the senecio rolianus that or the string of pearls but it's compact and more bubbly and tight so you don't have the space between the pearls that is i'll do the google thing so you can kind of see what i'm talking about right now look at that isn't that cool this one has one two three four five plants in it and several branches that i could pop off if i wanted to to have even more starts i don't think i'm going to do that though i kind of wanted this one not for the projects that i have coming up but more so just because 
uh, it's a good start to go ahead and put in a shallow dish and let it start to fill out like I had talked about before. Really fun foliage, just overall really cool plants. I know I said I didn't need any more of these, but Echeverias. I can never have too many Echeverias. Both of these are the Neon Breakers and they're in tiny little pots. But uh, don't get it twisted. These guys get pretty big and they get pretty big pretty quick, but for what I'm doing, these are gonna work really well. They do have some leaves that need to come out in here. They have some dead foliage. Not a big deal, it snaps right out. They could use a good watering, but you know, they're, I've seen better, but hey, they're tiny, they're cute, and they're gonna work for what I need them for. I love the colors and the textures in Neon Breakers. Hey, you know what, I have a bigger one. Let's go look at that one. There it is, with that Sansevieria leaf over it. This guy has grown a ton. I don't know if you remember when I planted it up, but it's been, I don't know, maybe a couple of months and it's at least doubled in size. That's probably a good eight inches in diameter. If it were getting more sun, the outside of those leaves, the edges would have an even more intense pinky color to them. It looks really cool when it does. So now I have two more of those, which I think is totally worth it because they are awesome. Ah, another Crassula. This is Crassula Calico Kitten, Crassula Marginalis Rubra Variegata. That's a pretty good name for this Crassula, actually. Really has a lot of different colors in it. It's got the white and green variegation. The older foliage has these pinky, reddish hues to them. This is a trailing crassula, so it's going to creep and crawl across the top of the soil, adding color and some diversity. I like this one a ton. This is going to be a really good succulent for me to have in my containers where I'm going to need some gaps filled in, and I think that this will spread and fill those out very nicely. All right, last ones. I didn't like prepare this in a manner where it's like a finale. It's just, it just happens to be the last ones. Oh, these are pretty darn cool. This is Senecio Hawathori. Uh, what is that? The cocoon plant. I actually had these in a big succulent haul that I did last year, and they turned out to be really, really cool plants. Not sure how it shows up on camera, but there's very, very, very fine hairs along these leaves. I've noticed with a lot of succulents that have that characteristic that they tend to rot very easily. Makes some sense. Those hairs are going to hold in moisture. So I'm going to be extra careful to make sure these guys stay on the drier side, and I'm not going to have these out in the rain either. They're going to go somewhere protected. Typically, the foliage on these is mostly white, Hence the cocoon plant. Each little leaf kind of looks like a cocoon, which is where that name comes from. But uh, these are kind of stained, which is unfortunate, but I'm just hopeful that the new growth, or they're actually probably burnt or dying. That's probably just dying foliage from them being in the dark. But I'm pretty hopeful that with some time, that'll all grow out and it'll have lots of new foliage and it'll be fine. They'll look pretty cool. These stay smaller, about four inches tall. So they're not going to go crazy, not going to get super big, just really fun, nice foliage, excellent contrast with everything else that I have going to make everything else stand out and pop a lot, but I'm going to be mindful about where I put them. I'm not going to put them near anything that can handle a little bit more water because, like I said, I th I think they would die if I did that. Ooh, does that make anybody uncomfortable? Made me feel a little weird, but I'll probably leave it in there. Oh, I almost forgot. I have this guy too. This is Senecio Articulatus. I actually picked this guy up um, a few weeks ago in a different haul, and I just, I forgot to show it to you guys. I actually left it at my friend's house, and the only reason I got it is because I thought it looked kind of like a snail, but a snail without a shell. And uh, yeah, it's seen better days. It was only $3. It'll bounce back, no problem. These are just kind of a fun little succulent. There's not much else to say other than it just, well, it just looks pretty cool. And of course, grows into a really neat looking plant. All right, that's gonna do it though. All kinds of fun new plants. I have a lot of fun projects coming up that I'm gonna be doing with these guys. And I just kind of wanted to show them off and talk about them a little bit before I actually dive into those projects. It's not often that I go out and I can get a whole bunch of succulents at one time, so it's fun to be able to kind of just do a separate video where they're all in one place. And who doesn't love succulents, right? They're just fun, easy, colorful plants that have a lot of versatility. I hope everybody's doing well. I have all my social media linked down below in the description of the video. Follow me and I follow you back. I'm mostly on Instagram and I have a lot of fun seeing everybody's pictures and talking back and forth with everybody. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a ton, helps the channel, helps the videos, means the world to me. Thank you so, so, so much for that. And subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. And don't forget to comment down below. I love talking to everybody. And above all else, and most importantly, as always, keep on growing. Bye-bye.